Hello everyone, it's Rachel here at Clarity Hands Crafts and today I am playing around with this idea that I got from Kathy's Garden, the YouTube channel. So it's an envelope style fold out with pockets inside and my version of doing it might be different to Kathy's. I'm not really sure. I kind of I watched the video and then a couple of days later I made it so I can't remember if I've done it the exact same way but it was her general idea. So I think that you can make this in any size with any size of paper so let's try it with this 12 by 12. I think she did it in US letter size or A4 something like that but I am working with this 12 by 12. It's definitely going to work better with a non-directional print. This one does have a direction but I don't think it really matters that much. So I'm going to flip to the back of it. Now well I should refer it to the inside shouldn't I so we've got the inside piece so I like to have that as the plain side and then the outside piece is going to be the busier side with more pattern so I'm working on the inside at the moment now we're going to fold the paper into thirds and it doesn't have to be exact thirds so the good thing about this is there's no measuring involved you can just kind of wing it and see what you come up with how it works but I am going approximately here and that looks about right to me I'm going to fold it right so now I can see that that section is smaller than that section and that really doesn't matter at all then we're going to fold the top section downwards and really crease it well because the sides are going to be folded in which means that you're going to have two folds on the same section of paper so in this corner it's going to be folded twice so you want to make sure that the top fold is really well squashed so now we're going to fold the edges in and we want to have an overlap somewhere around the center Now that overlap, is, I'm doing it about a pinky finger width. All right, I don't know if you can see it there, but I'm talking about this bit here where one overlaps the other slightly so that you can keep it shut. And then your pages aren't falling out everywhere. You'll see when we get closer to the end what I mean by that. then really burnish that fold again and then if you need sorry I'm working in a mess today I've got things out all over the place but if you need to pop something in just to make sure that the crease is in the right position then either a credit card or a bone folder like this will work and then I'm making sure that that's as straight as I can get it on the top before I fold those ones out. Better off working on that side, I think. So this has made a good size, I think. So you want to have the upper flap coming downwards, so that it's um, on the outside rather, and then the bottom flap going inside. I hope I'm making sense. I feel like I'm waffling. Right. The next thing to do is to open the paper out completely. And then we're going to cut out the corner sections. One, two, three, four. They all need to be removed. Just a pair of scissors will do, but if you want to use a paper trimmer and be nice and straight, then I do understand. So I don't know where my bigger purple scissors are, but I'm going to just use these yellow kitchen scissors to cut out those sections. That's really difficult to see under this light. So what I'm going to do is use my ink because I know that I'm going to be inking this and I think it'll just help you see. So I'm just going to ink all of the folds. There we go. It's just because I've got an overhead light, it kind of fills in all of the creases so I can't see what I'm doing. So if that just 
there that makes it loads easier to see where I'm cutting I've done that a bit wonky but I'll straighten up afterwards so let's get removing these sections so this is going to make kind of a passport size envelope Oh, I had to go to a meeting the other day and I needed to take ID so I took my uh, my passport with me. My son was talking to me, he was just chatting along and then mid-sentence he went, ah, what are you taking that for? What's that for? And I said, I just need it for the ID. I think he thought I was going on holiday without him. <laughs> he had a little panic. <laughs> Okay, so that's the bottom, and then the sides will fold like that, and then the top will fold down like that. Now we need to do some tidying up because some of these edges are stopping things from folding properly. So I'm just going to take a sliver off that edge. And a sliver off that edge. Just to make sure that top fold will fold. That's better. some edges neatening up here. Made them worse. there and now everything will fold up neatly and flat okay and now I'm going to cut part of the bottom flap so this is going to fold up like this and this is going to make a pocket so I want to cut this somewhere around here to make that pocket so if I line those up with my board and then I think the easiest way to do this is going to be with a craft knife and a steel ruler so I'm going to take it up to about there and just actually I'm going to do it slightly higher one quarter of an inch higher and remove that and that will make our first pocket now I'm going to cut a notch out using a circle punch and I'm going to guess where the middle is. I'm thinking it's somewhere around there. Oh no, I've just torn it. Never mind, there are no mistakes in junk journaling. Oh, that's blunt. I need a new one. Or I'll sharpen it somehow. Maybe try the tin foil trick, see if that works. But anyway, we'll pretend that was neat and tidy. <laughs> so that's the first pocket. Now, we're going to take those sections that you cut away. I forgot to say that you will need to keep them. But we're going to make our pockets using those leftover pieces. If I just put a nick in there, then I'll know where I need to cut. So that will go there, try a mini thumb notch, so 
somewhere around there. And then the other piece, when I locate it, and then I'm going to cut another one of those, but it's not going to be exactly the same size because, as I say, those flats are slightly different sizes. So what I want to do, though, is keep the border pretty equal. So if I'm working in millimetres, that's a couple of millimetres wide. So I can just should start somewhere about there. And then the top, I can make that the same height as that one. And that can be somewhere. <laughs> Pencils needed, I think. Where is it? I found my good scissors, though. That's good. <laughs> it was just buried. I'm just going to use my pen to make a little mark there so that I can see where to cut it. They are so much better. Right, fingers crossed this will fit. Hey, somewhere around the right spot. And then just take another thumb notch out of there. And now I want to ink all of the other side and the inside. <coughs> so I'm just using Tim Hodd's Distress Ink for the edges. And now we can glue, actually no, we're going to open this out and then what I think I'll do is just add a bit of stamping to make it a bit more interesting on the inside. Because that's what Kathy did. I'm just going to add an odd bit of script using this um, seal brown from Crafter's Companion. And that'll just take some of that stark whiteness away. So we need to glue the sides of this first pocket. and then glue that up into place like that. And then these can be glued on three sides. Sides and bottom. And don't forget, if you pick it up by the open edge, then you'll know that the remaining three edges are the ones that need glue. And you won't accidentally seal your pocket shut. There. I think that lace is a bit too fine, isn't it, to be striking enough. Add something small and decorative. Let's try this one. Ooh. I'm not using that, but I do like it. So these came from, um, my mum goes to a craft group and there was loads of stuff left in cupboards that had clearly been there for years and untouched. So they cleared out the cupboard and I got loads of stuff. Oh, I like that. That's nice. So if I just cut that to the width of the pocket, of the flap rather. Even these scissors could do with a sharpen. So I'm gonna put that right along the front flap. I'm 
like that. So I'm just going to put a little pea, a little dab of glue along that bottom edge. And then I'm going to put a dab of glue along that top of the trim where it's thick and the glue won't show through too much. And then I can decide on the position. I'm just going to overhang ever so slightly those scalloped edges. There, lovely. You see how that looks? Cool. Right. So now we want to make our fastener and I am using this coordinating scrap and I'm going to try and use most of one of those flowers with my large circle punch. Um, so which one am I most likely to be able to get? Oh, it will fit a whole flower so let's cut into this. Oh, that was a good position. That can be the outside and then the inside I'll do it in the same stuff that the envelope's made of. I think so and then I need a brad to go with it. Okay so I'm going to place one of those on top of the other and then just pierce a little hole with my craft knife somewhere around the centre and then that should go through. Like so. Oh, I don't know why I've pierced that. I didn't need to. Anyway, you can't really see it, so that's fine. And I'll just ink around the circles. Okay, and I'm just going to dab that pin into the ink so that I know it's left a tiny mark there and I just know where to leave to make another cut. Somewhere around there and then that should go through a bit more easily. I can turn it over, split the pin. And then this other one will seal over it. So plenty of glue on that one. To hide that pin. So from my bag in bag of embroidery floss that I got from Amazon, I'm gonna tie that around. And knot it right under there. And then we can wrap that one, two. So I want to have three strands if I can, just because I like things in threes. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And then we'll trim that. So that's the tie closure done. And then you should be able to Hang on, <laughs> I need to figure out which ones the, the free one. Let's just snip that one close so that we can't get hold of that one by mistake. And then a knot in the end of this one. 
will just give you something to grab onto and help you find the end more easily. Another knot for good luck. Turned out to be bad luck because then <laughs> it went in the wrong place. There we go, it's a nice chunky knot. And then we need to fill our pockets now. So I've just got a little slip of note paper there. I keep using this one in demonstrations, but then I've got the photograph tag there. A little letter card and then something for this pocket. What have I got? Is this tag the right size? Yes, it is. So we'll just make a copy of this, um, possibly with that rose paper again. It's a bit matchy matchy, but never mind. Let's just cut that out. No, oh, I can still use that to find the position of the hole. some more of that twine so we'll just take off a thin strand and make that be the, the pull on this tag find the inside and pull it through That looks awful, doesn't it? <laughs> Might as well have used to human hair, but never mind. Anyway, you get the idea. Otherwise I'll be sitting here all day. Okay, so fold, fold, flap down, tie, tie, tie. Swivel it round. There we have it. Okay, I hope you liked it, everybody. And I will see you again next time for another video. I'm not sure what it'll be, whether it'll be a craft with me or a tutorial, but we'll see you then anyway. <laughs> Bye.